Hey there, welcome to the 31st episode of Rambling Weekly. In this episode, we're going to talk about stale moves. Uh, yeah, what does that mean? Well, you'll find out. Listen on. Crunchy tune is Nocturnus from the game The Last Spell uh, by Remy Gallego or The Algorithm. Yeah, crunchy good tune. It is a kind of like a tower defense game. I think tower defense and tactical RPG meets, oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> Because that's all this game is. Uh, I mean, some people seem to be really, really able to abuse the system. I'm not one of those people. So it just feels, if you're just like me and you're just like a normal, not very well thinking person, <laughs> and you just kind of bash your head against the problem, you're going to have troubles. It's going to be difficult. If you are a smooth, non-galaxy brain like myself, I'm not a Pac-Man player. <sighs> Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's a fun game. I've been uh, playing it here and there, and it's just one of those things you can do a few waves. It's, it can it can take some time. You can like play a few waves of it, set it down, and come back to it like the next day or something. I really like that element of it, even though I get my butt kicked. Plus, the soundtrack is really good. I like the music a lot. So that's what the music, the bumpers for today for the for this episode are going to be all from the last spell, and it's it's on Steam. I highly highly recommend the game but if you're not into turn-based strat tower defense roguelike-esque gameplay uh, this might rub you the wrong way it's certainly not for everybody but it it works for me what's been going on other than that um not tons really i've uh, been slowly chipping away at i finished a chapter the other day and i've been slowly chipping away at it, it typing typing it out and stuff like that so because uh, i write it out by hand this is part of part of my curse <laughs> i have a hard time typing out story just straight from straight from fingertips to keyboard so i write it out and then i do a little bit of a soft edit where i'm like ah tweak this ah, just change this and that sort of thing and i've still got um 13 more pages to go so lovely <laughs> But that's coming along. I'm nearly done with it. I probably have about four or five chapters left, so woohoo! Exciting times. Uh, that's not including all of the edits, all of the printing, all of the red ink. Uh, yay! Yeah, so getting through that, uh, I have also was super excited to get a second anthem album i don't know if i even mentioned that i got the first one i've like i really like anthem but i never outside of neon falcon disc that i have i've never really owned any of their music because i am a slouch and i would just listen to it on youtube but i picked up bound to break and tightrope and i've got both of them and so now i am excited about the possibilities of having fantastic 80s metal music <laughs> <laughs> they're really good soundtrack or soundtracks. They're really good. They're really good albums. I let's see on t tightrope. <laughs> let's see. I would say maybe n night after night might be my favorite song. Uh, I don't know that one. night after night might be my favorite. And then on t -t 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 bound to break. <sighs> There's a, a lot of really good songs on this one. I really like Machine Made Dog a lot. I, I think I, I like Bound to Break a little bit more as an album, but uh, they're both enjoyable tunes to me if you like old 80s style of <sighs> heavy rock metal. Pick them up. Or are you, they're on YouTube. You can listen to them on YouTube. So check them out. Uh, beyond that, I, I, you know, I still haven't even touched Live a Live. I got that shortly after it got released and have not touched it yet, which is unfortunate but it is what it is that's kind of the the curse of of working so much isn't it you just you do a lot of work and and you don't have time for all the fun things oh no <laughs> uh, in, in one hand that's 
you know, that's the problem. I could just devote all of my time to, to playing those things and just not do anything. I could do that, but uh, what would I do then? <laughs> Other than just to me, I feel like I probably go go the sad route. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it would be a, uh, an enjoyable enjoyable time for me to do something like that. So I just chip away at all of the fun games that I have while doing a bunch of other stuff in between work. Exciting times. <laughs> Beyond that, really though, not too much. I mean, that's really, really about it. Kind of fiddled with the keyboard a bit. <laughs> I have about 20, 30 seconds of something that I'm like, oh, I kind of like the sound of it, but I have no idea what I want to do with it. <laughs> so, yeah, great, cool. I ju it just taunts me and just be like, oh, you can't do anything with it. <laughs> that's that's kind of how it feels with me. That is what it is. People, people getting getting sick again. It seems like I've I've not been getting sick. Somehow, thankfully, I just kind of go go with the flow Phew. so that's i think that's that's not much of, a, of an update i hope everybody else is doing good not only doing good but also i don't want to say productive but i want to i hope you're being productive be productive get, get the thing you need to do and get them done <laughs> uh, but uh yeah so topic for today before going into it and stuff we have the bumper and whatnot you know say it's stale moves and what does that even mean basically i decided to tip my cap and borrow the super smash brothers concept of you use the same move over and over again it sort of depreciates in value they're not nearly as strong you don't have as much as a punch back mind you that doesn't seem to stop some of them from still being just as obnoxious and whatnot Kind of going with that concept of, uh, you know, kind of similarly to like, oh, you know, say you really like cheesecake and it's a treat, but you eat cheesecake, like eating it like maybe like once a month, but then you start eating it twice a month and then it turns into every week and then it turns into every third day and then it turns into every day and then every meal is just a cheesecake meal and of course not that extreme but the depreciation of appreciation is kind of what i want to talk about that might actually change the topic to that i kind of like that depreciation of appreciation <laughs> we got it so yeah we're going to talk about that a little bit after the bump bump that song there is old woods and uh, like most of these songs for this i think all of them that i picked for it are what would be like battle themes so they, they play during the night <laughs> with all the turns and the hordes invading and stuff but yeah that song's old woods and it, you know it starts off initially feeling like it's like a, a 60s or seven no maybe not 70 i think like a very clean black Sabbath. That's that's what comes to my mind. Something along that those lines. And then it sort of gets a little bit more video gamey with the doo -doo 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 kind of thing. And it's just like, yeah, this rocks. It's such a good tune. I love this game. It's so much fun, even though I'm not very good at it. Decent, but uh, it's it's a tough game. And they even say up front, it's like, hey, this is a tough game. Be careful. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't, don't, don't beat yourself up over it. It's, it's a tough game. And I appreciate that sort of honesty from the get go. But yeah, so uh, topic, the depreciation of, of appreciation. And I know maybe that might be a little bit of a sidestep of exactly how I want to talk about this, thinking about it. But I just liked that, the, those, those words. That little phrase sounded really nice to me <laughs> when I said it. I think of a lot of different things when it comes to this uh, i guess from the the stale stale moves aspect of oh hey you know this came about i was sitting there like you do looking at the youtubes and there are tons of these videos and I've, I've talked to a few different people about them and they they in one hand boggle my mind it boggles my mind because i remember a day in an age when you couldn't do a 10 minute video and now people put out 12 hour <laughs> brown noise videos where it's just an audio bit but this is where it comes from comes from is this the saturation of these videos that are intended to be a soothing sort of thing or to evoke some sort of and here's an, an hour and 20 minutes of glitch funk pop and uh, just uh, maybe not so much the glitch funk pop <laughs> That's mean of me to completely smoosh together genres and then castigate it as the evil one. But uh, more in the sense of uh, like the ambient uh, thunderstorms or, or spooky Halloween ambience with rain. That's more of kind of like a windstorm. You got this soothing bit to it. It's probably a delineation, uh, a an evolution of the ASMR stuff where you know, people make sounds and, and whatnot. Uh, I know people who have white sound machines to help them sleep at night and that sort of thing to take it outside of the internet and YouTube lands. I think of the cornucopia, the plethora, the myriad of cleaning supplies for one they've transitioned from a lemon scent for a while everything lemon was uh, seen as the that's that's the the scent of the things that you clean so let's let's not eat lemons because that's gross to now more of a lavender There's lavender and a lot of things lavender aroma and i know lavender has it's supposed to have a, a soothing or a calming effect to re reduce anxiety However, th this is this is the crux of the discussion that I wish to bring up today, and that is it's too much. Not in the sense of there's just too much of that stuff, but it's I think of like uh, for myself, I love cinnamon, so there was a stretch of time where I would literally take cinnamon powder and put it on my hands just because I would smell it, and then I could just like put it to my hands and smell it and be like oh it's cinnamon it's a nice smell of cinnamon and who doesn't like the smell of cinnamon eh, it might be a little goofy but it's not like i'm licking my hands and going mm, this is this are tasty but um i just liked it and i know it's you know it's good for for health things and stuff but i think we get into this bad habit of we hear something uh <laughs> i was I think of eggs and how they're they're good for you they're healthy they're bad for you they're 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 blah 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 something like oh yeah cinnamon helps reduce anxiety and blood pressure or blood sugar levels and stuff and so everything for the next two weeks has to be cinnamon <laughs> I think of also drug use and now this is like a hard pivot but stay with me i'm not i'm not that that agile not that <laughs> i don't have breakaway speed we're we're, we're we're gonna make it to the basket together guys uh, but i think of, of drug use and how if you take a drug and then you proceed to continue to take said drug uh if you take said drug in the same place over and over you need to start upping up the dosage because you know your body has adjusted to it similarly to like medications and stuff like if you're not really able to pinpoint and stop the root cause and just sort of balance things out eventually the the, the weights are going to start to to tip back into the the bad favor with with like drug use and stuff this is i could be also way off course but i vaguely remember how uh, there are a lot of ods that would happen due to people who would use drugs and then go to a new place and so there's now the heightened sense of like the body's just heightened senses of a new new environment what it would do is put the body in shock because they're already redlining but now they've they've kind of blown the motor at this point and uh because of those heightened senses they don't need as much 
to achieve the same sort of high that they would get if they had kept taking it in the, the pla like place that they normally would. So in this new place, they would still do the same amount that they had been doing, but because they're in a new place, new environment, senses are already overloaded, and you know, they're they're pinging higher than they have in a while, and then they just kind of put the system into shock. And that's where I think that you have a similar thing go on nowadays with things like lavender scented toilet paper, <laughs> lavender scented toilet paper, and stuff like that. It's like, oh, uh, mm, that's kind of gross. I don't. Uh, I mean, I I bathe regularly. <laughs> promise, pinky pinky promise. But uh, mm, no, I I just no. <laughs> gross, I don't know, or, you know, lavender candles, lavender Lysol spray, you know, <laughs> disinfectant, and it's just the push to then be like, oh, well, this is, this is an anxiety reducer and stuff. Well, that I think is in the same approach is that when you inundate your system, your senses with these sorts of things over and over and over for a prolonged period of time, eventually you're just, you're going to need more or you need to shift gears into something else. Maybe perhaps instead of lavender, go the same cinnamon round but in the set maybe perhaps instead of either one you might have to do something different maybe you know there's you do instead of coming home to clean maybe instead you you come home to take 30 minutes to uh, practice on the piano or if you if that's not possible to do some coloring in a book or or do some some drawing or some doodling or take a little bit of a walk yeah it's, it's different options uh, i guess is uh, what i'm kind of going for there because i think you build the habits of doing what you do so your your brain has these grooves we'll say these electronic synapses the synapses doing their th their thing you know they get good at doing that thing so when they're done doing the the thing that they're doing or, or you know they've been able to lift that weight to where it's no longer a struggle i think at that point introspectively you need to somehow be able to identify it's like okay something's up i need to do something a little bit different to rekindle the love in my affair with life <laughs> uh, i'm such a dork uh but um I guess that's that's my my thing is that it's you have things like that lavender scent the lemon scent and sure you can have the association of the scent but if you burn out that association i think that can happen with people too it's like oh you know you go to like some town or part of a city or something and you just Okay. <laughs> meet people who are just obnoxious you're like wow i really don't want to go to that part of town anymore i will go elsewhere because i think it's sort of similar to that because it's yeah well yeah i keep on going to this place so yeah it's obnoxious or then you just sort of deal with the obnoxiousness or maybe you become the obnoxiousness <laughs> uh, that sort of thing or you know maybe it's not obnoxiousness maybe it's just weird it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. There's been plenty of small towns that I've gone to here and there, and it's, like, weird. <laughs> you kind of wonder if you stumbled onto, like, a horror movie set, and you're just like, oh, great. Everybody's, like, some sort of pod people. <laughs> I think that that's a big issue that people have, is that grinding of of doing the the same thing. For some people, that works. They can, like, there there is certainly a, a nice comfort in the simplicity of repetition some people that's just how they have to work yeah for whatever reason there's too many shiny objects and when they do not have that repetition the shiny objects are too alluring and they're like a fish that's seen not even like good bait but just the hook and just kind of goes Bloop. And just, you know, goes and gets caught and then uh, that's it for them. They're, they are out of the big blue and is dinner for somebody <laughs> or something. Like I said, this goes with both, not both, but, you know, with comfort, comfort foods. The same thing, like, that's why I was bringing up the cheesecake thing. I know it's a rich food and that's kind of an extreme, but you see it with like, I think this is why we are provided so many options so many flavors when it comes to food stuffs uh for better or for worse part of it's yeah there people they're like this is, this is companies efforts to try to oh you know keep keep up with the good sales kit kat oh you think kit kats are boring boom how about a blueberry muffin kit kat yeah you you i mean you've, you've suckered 
plenty of us into <laughs> buying some of these goofy flavors just to see how awful or decent they are. I think it's a similar thing. Uh, similar thing. It's like, well, a company needs. They're trying to trying to boost sales and all that sort of stuff. So that's that's how they go about it. They bring in new flavors, do change the packaging, make it new and exciting. Sort of same thing in life. It's like, yeah, yeah, you're kind of doing the same thing. Now, oh, you know, I, I come home and I high five my Kirby's. I don't know. I, not something I do. <laughs> <laughs> I I am not that weird, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I I I come home and like I like chili, uh, so you know, make make some chili or something, and then eat that even if it's ninety odd degrees outside or incredibly humid. Just something I do. Uh, eventually, at some point, it's like mm, okay, I've kind of had my fill of chili, and I don't mean just with this meal, but uh, <laughs> for a while, and then I'll go months without eating it because I'll eat something different that's that's how i i am I, I i have those stretches where it's like oh a month block of monster cheese why certainly you are delicious and i will eat you in like three days <laughs> when i really uh, probably shouldn't do that but it, i treat it kind of like a snack and then i won't eat monster cheese for maybe a week and a half two weeks three weeks and then i'll do it again and then again and again and again but it's 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 long enough between them that it's not a habit of oh i bought monster cheese uh i have now eaten it through i must have more and now i'll eat it through again it's like no like uh that's or like the spicy nacho limon doritos or something eh, that or tea i do that with tea like i'll like, drink oolong for a stretch and then i'll stop i'll back off and then i'll get back onto it that's just really how i am so i guess they don't stay over to where I get sick of them, but they stay just long enough to where when I, I've I've had my fill and then I'm like, oh, I'm hankering for this and I bring it back and stuff. It's like, ah, it's familiar, but in the same hand, there's still a bit of freshness to it. Obviously, not everybody is like that. Obviously, not everybody is going to feel that that's how they should go about doing, doing stuff. I, I just think that maybe I'm overly sim <laughs> simplifying this. I think it would I think it would be a good thing for people to do to say with something like the lavender aroma cutting that out for a bit and then either you know burn some other incense or get a different candle scent or uh i don't know fill fill your your place with the aroma of of something you cooked hopefully well <laughs> at least tasty enough for yourself something to give the senses a little exercise you know, it's, they, they are a part of your body, and I think they would appreciate uh, getting getting a workout in different ways. Even if, you know, it's something, my, not say, you know, sniff your trash or anything, but sometimes it's 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 good to have that rancid smell. <laughs> to be like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, not not being fooled by, I remember years ago seeing a uh, some article or something about how the, uh, <laughs> the scent of farts allegedly boosts your, your like white blood cell count or something ridiculous and i'm like no i'm not <laughs> i will not be fooled into sniffing my own farts why why would you think this I mean, it, part of it's because of the like the, they, they say it's the, the aroma of sulfur does something to i it's been ages and maybe i'm misremembering this <laughs> But I do remember something about this, darn it. Shifting a little bit from, from s sniffing your own farts. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I do this as well with uh, taking a shower. I never knew that this was called this, but it, allegedly it's called a Scottish shower, which, uh, you know, could easily be some horrific phrase that the internet just used for something else entirely disgusting. What it is, allegedly, at least this is what I do, is um, alternating hot and cold while taking a shower or something. And then, you know, hot wash and stuff, but then cold to, like, I, usually I won't alternate, like, off and on, off and on. Usually I'll be like, wash and then stuff, and then I'll gradually get it a little cooler, and then I'll, I'll, I'll go cold for the last little bit of it, and then I'll be done. Something like that. Like, that's, that's a part of your senses. Um, and I think that's, it is, a nice reminder to push push your comfort levels a little bit in the sense of comfortness and just the sense of just sitting and doing nothing as opposed to like oh i want to uh, like do some really way out there sort of things i'm going to uh fall off the roof of 
well, I don't even know where I'm going with this. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I guess in the sense of um, you yourself as opposed to somebody else pushing your comfort levels. There's, that's a very different thing. Uh, you yourself go, like, personally, okay, I'm going to eh, take a little bit of a cold shower. That's a very minor push to of, of discomfort. And it's not to say, oh, get 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 familiar and embrace the discomfort, because that's that's not exactly where I'm going with that. Because a that gets into some weird territory, <laughs> and and b uh, that's not a, a healthy mindset to just necessarily br embrace it. I think it, you should just acknowledge it and be like, oh, this is discomfort. I ain't, I ain't too keen on it, but I mean, it's not to say that people aren't aware of what discomfort is but i think if you live a life that isn't really uncomfortable in in your own personal setting in your own little bubble it can really disassociate yourself from being able to keep an even head when it comes to just dealing with other nonsense either from just other people or just things in general like uh you know, I like to laugh a lot, obviously, when <laughs> I, I, I put these together and stuff, and I'm chuckling and being silly and stuff, but I also do, I laugh when I drop something or just have something stupid happen. Sure, there's times where I'm just like, this is stupid, this is nonsense, this is garbage. Like, <laughs> I have those moments. I am a human being, after all. There, there's plenty of times where I just kind of like, okay. All right, it's going to be one of those kind of days. <laughs> just sort of laugh about it and then go about my business. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, that is how, how I contend with that. But then when it's when it's on a more like personal and just kind of private sort of thing, I'm just like, eh, when it's like push comes to shove, kind of similarly to what I said before about like, eh, you know, you're not really competing with anybody but yourself in the moment. I think in giving you those uncomfortable moments and I don't want to say reveling in it, even though that's the word that <laughs> leaped out of my mouth. Contending with it, that you're able to then make a good effort to push beyond. But maybe, maybe I'm completely wrong about that, and that's just that's just my personal experience. So, what do I know? I'm just a goober talking into a microphone at 11:07 at night. The end. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's where I'll go, go with that. I guess it's just, it's a concern and that's why I bring it up as a, a topic to ramble about because it does feel like there is a depreciation in the appreciation of the th things that we do like especially when it comes to the things like thunderstorms and the ra sound of rain. Like if you, if you have that at, at your, the, at your fingertips to just be like, boom, it really feels similarly like to like the peaks and valleys of stuff like you gotta have the peaks and the valleys that because it makes the peaks more pronounced and the valleys that much more um, but if you're able to just make rain sounds all the time it, it really depreciates the sound of rain doesn't it at least that's how i feel you you start to lose that i don't want to say mystique but that soothing just kind of sound of rain hitting hitting the roof Maybe a little bit of wind just kind of blowing through and stuff. Not like a torrential downpour. You don't need maybe a soft rumble just here and there, but just the nice sound of rain. And here you have your stupid three-hour spooky Halloween aesthetic. Halloween ambience rain shot. I, I was listening to one the other day. That's why I was. That's why it's, I keep on bringing it up. Because A, it's only August and we're already getting ready for Halloween. Kind of a little early, guys. That's all I'll say. But uh, yeah, so um, we'll uh, have a bump and then a quote. Yeah, see you on the other side.
Hello and welcome back. That tune there is The Great War, and I really like the strings that pop in. I guess they don't really pop in per se, but I like the strings in the song. It's <laughs> not like they're some sort of amazing bit, but just the, the tune all together. Yeah, tough stuff. And I like it. I like it a lot. The Great War. Anyways, I'm going to be a bit of a jerk and peek behind the curtain. I don't always have a quote that I'm like, oh, I'll pair it with this. It's usually going to be like, mm, okay, I've did talk. Um, let me see. Let me think. Mm -hmm -hmm. And I couldn't really think of anything. So I instead decided to use the wonderful internet, <laughs> we'll say. And uh, there are a few I found, and I wanted to give mention to them uh, because they all kind of tie back into uh, this this discomfort thing. So one comes from Chris Jami of the book Colosophy. There's sometimes a tucking feeling you get to push further when you aren't being challenged enough or when things get too comfortable. Uh, not quite... Uh, these will progressively get more into it. I think that might be where I, uh, that is the, <laughs> the stick approach that uh, keeps me going there when I will, you know, do the, do the cold shower thing or, or, you know, when people work out, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, there are certainly extremes to that where it's like, okay, go, maybe going a little far. Let's <gasps> reel it back in. But I guess it's in the sense of the comfortableness. If you're too comfortable with that, like, is it, like if you were too comfortable in the discomfort, uh, maybe, 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 mm, mm, might be time to reevaluate that. <laughs> uh, I'm very much of the mind that you know if if there, there's that irritating little henpeck of something in your in your in your soul that you can you can feel, that's probably a, a note to be like, hey, you should probably go go a level beyond, Goku Super Saiyan three it. Well, maybe not shout for like five minutes. Might might get you some weird looks and visit from the police from the neighbors calling and stuff, but that sort of thing. This other one that I like is the name's uh, Sterling Hawkins, Hawkins, and it is uh, surrendering is difficult to do, much like getting into the practice of confronting the discomfort. The more you practice it, the more aware and present you become. Maybe this is where I'm kind of thinking more along the lines of not necessarily surrender. I can see where I'm going in and stuff but more in the sense of practicing the confront and i guess maybe that's more of what i i, I do and that is is you practice that so that you can being in the discomfort you want to get comfortable so you know if you become comfortable then you you kind of don't want to go out out of the bubble of comfort but it's kind of like the paradox of hedonism right if you constantly pursue the thing that hedonistically where it's like oh this thing is the thing that gives me pleasure i will i will do it because it's here and it is now but over the long period of time you, it doesn't necessarily create more happiness or more ecstasy or, or what have you it's not usually the case hence the paradox. <laughs> uh, so that that discomfort is the thing that needles me to be like, oh, hmm, let's push beyond this. Let's go. Let's 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 go. Kind of thing. So, and then the other one that I have here is from Simon Marshall, and that is when we practice suffering, we are reinforcing neural pathways associated with discomfort and behavioral persistence. <laughs> a very, a, a very uh, not dressed up. Not very poetic. Not a lot of poetry in that line, but more so the behavior, uh, the persistence. Sure, obstinance can always be an obnoxious thing, but when somebody's persistent, as long as they're being persistent for good values, we'll say, um, which maybe for some people might not be the same as others. There, there are a few billion of us. More so the, the tenacity of, of a person is something I always appreciate. And I guess that's where I try to, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I might not show it so much, or I don't know. I think I think I think I try to the tenacity with uh, putting out uh, stuff on this this channel. Maybe the audacity, <laughs> but, but uh, to you just keep on kind of pushing through with it and stuff. Because I think I think there's something to that where yeah, yeah certainly lots of stumblings, lots, and that's going to happen. The willingness to take this take the licks and then keep going. You know, be be like Rocky. You know, it isn't about how hard you hit; it's about how hard you get hit and then get back up like yeah like and i think in practicing some of some sort of that discomfort it helps with getting back up after getting hit because it's going to hit you i guess that's kind of the insidiousness 
the insidious nature of that malaise of just sort of burning out it's a life burnout sort of thing where it just that <laughs> you know where where the, the scent of lavender doesn't quite reduce anxiety anymore the scent of cinnamon doesn't make me happy or you know reduce my blood sugar because i eat cinnamon sugar but that <laughs> but that is graying out of everything you know you see that with like the gray morality of the dark hero kind of thing and it's like well in one hand yeah they're doing the the thing that needs to be done but in the same hand there's something to be said about trying to go the 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 higher higher path right quote unquote higher path yeah that or at least like sticking sticking with your your scruples i always think of like a historical example of uh, cato the younger who um hated julius caesar and just hated him obnoxious turd and you know cato the younger is like oh he would have been he was he would have been a model roman handful of generations before he's a stick in the mud different times call for different people and uh uh, Caesar was leading that charge, and Cato the Younger was not too thrilled about that, to the point of once Caesar was going around, and I believe this was after he had beaten Pompey and stuff, and was getting close to pretty much being set to uh, be around before he got poked. He goes to invade Cato, or like capture Cato the Younger, just so that he can like pardon him, so he'd be basically owing him favor. Cato's like, no, not happening. And then, despite all the efforts to try to get him to not stab himself he he basically guts himself out and he's like i'm not doing that uh there, there, there's there, there's something i can that i appreciate appreciate out of that which i know is kind of weird but i guess it's that that sort of persistence to be like uh, i'm sticking with my scruples we all die in the end sorry to spoil that story but <laughs> It's like, I guess it's, you know, are you the, the conniving, super duper wonder child that is Caesar, or are you somebody like Cato the Younger? Is more footnote than, eh, he's a little bit more than a footnote. Not, not, maybe, maybe like a half a page, <laughs> or like a couple paragraphs, maybe. Uh, I mean, there's stuff on it, but I mean, in the in the in the grand scheme of things, there's not a lot of a lot of players at hand, and uh, we're we're really not going to be uh, we w those lucky few, and I I I say lucky very tongue in cheek, but those lucky few, where is the head that wears the crown or something something of sort? Yeah, yeah. So, eh. 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 whatever uh, persistence. Uh, I I get through the the cold shower things to keep being persistent and don't lose that edge as as silly as that may sound anyways that's it i'm done <laughs> i've i've just right just just this this show has gone off the rails i have changed the title i have sort of changed the topic uh, <laughs> and i've tried to keep it i've tried I tried really hard, but that's okay, because you know what? We're going out on a banger. This song the, on this outro is Oath, and it is the boss stage, boss night theme, and it just jams, and boy, when you hear that, it is the L Ralph from Simpsons at the back of the school bus chuckling. <laughs> I'm in danger. That's that's what this tune is, and it, it, it works really well, and you're going, oh no, I'm in trouble. <laughs> And there is nothing that's going to save me. <laughs> that is what this game, <laughs> The Last Spell, offers to its players until you are able to figure out ways to abuse its system. So, yay. <laughs> but, yeah, good stuff. Anyways, that is it for me. Thank you for listening. Enjoy your week. And, yeah. Later. Later.